Hi gamers, it's Roman in Japan, Jake Hunter here, and after having just been in Tokyo at Akihabara and seeing what a lot of these retro stores are selling at tourist prices, it's refreshing to be in a place where you can find N64's complete, well okay, not complete, but at least they've got all the cords and a controller for about $30, and they have a whole variety of colors. I am in the southern prefecture of Miyazaki where normally people would come to go surfing, relax on the beach, but I'm here to visit the one hard off in the whole area. But I will be going to the beach quite soon after I film this video. But not before I can point out this in real good condition orange Pikachu. I'm pretty sure this is the Japan exclusive one. America got the blue one. I don't think America got the orange one. This could, I mean, this could go for easily $100 plus. You can get it here for about $60. And what's nice, is see normally hard offs will they'll package systems like this where you know for the N64 controller the stick is very sensitive and then it's here it's bending because of the shrink wrap and the shrink wrap tends to destroy a lot of stuff but what they've done here with some care is put in a little uh put in a little styrofoam brick to preserve the stick which is beautiful and I love it they have so many systems here unfortunately not the ones that I'm looking for I'm looking for a, a complete in box PS1 um, and they do have the original PlayStation, but I'm looking for the PS1 variant, but they've got lots, they've got lots of Xbox 360s, which is very interesting. You don't see Xbox 360s, they have, I mean, man, they have a lot. This is more than I expected, I don't, I guess Miyazaki's a big, uh, a big Xbox town, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they've also got loads of them, so they've got this, they've got this 250 gigabyte console going for about $100. They even have an Xbox One, the original, the OG Xbox One going for, uh, I mean, not the OG, but, you know, the, well, the original model of the Xbox One is going for about $150. And they have all of these beautiful, beautiful GameCubes. You've even got the Japan-exclusive orange, the, what was it, Spice Orange, I think is what they called it, going for $40. Each of these is going for about $40 um, for a system that has both the AV cables and a controller. This one is a little special because, well, for one, it does not have the orange uh, orange controller, but it does have the the Game Boy Player. I don't see the CD with it, so you can get the Game Boy Player, but you're not going to be able to play any games with it, unfortunately. Oh, they've got so they've got a lot of systems here, and then if you go over here, that's where we find the Wii's. They even have the special Mari the red. Mario Wii. This is pretty rare and is actually getting quite pricey. This used to be just about the same as any other Wii, but now it's going for $70, where I'm trying to figure out, I think this one's, see this Wii is going for $100. I think that's because it comes with both of its controllers. It's also going, it has three, um, a three month of warranty on it. I think also because it comes with the Wii Party. Oh, and it's got the pink controller. So I think for some reason that makes it more expensive than say this black Wii over here, which is about $30, yeah, it just comes with one controller, no software, no nothing. And then of course they have a lot of the different white ones, lots of Wii's, uh, you're not going to ever be able to escape them. They're going to be uh, clogging up the junk pile very soon. Here we even have uh, some PS2's, uh, they're going for about $80, that's about right, that seems to be what they are everywhere else. The PS2 has really kept its value, which is something I, I keep yapping, I keep harping on about. Oh man, and then there's this beautiful, the beautiful Lightning version 1, PlayStation 3. I love this console, wish, wish I had the $100 to buy it, unfortunately I do not. Man, I already have a PS3 anyways. I actually have two, I have my American PS3 and my Japanese PS3. I mean, one PS3 is enough, and then, oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful red. The red slim console, oh, I love that red. Anything else on this side? Not that I can tell. Wow, they made it. This is it. They made it Michael Jackson PS3. <laughs> it looks like not. Nah, just it's just a black PS3 with the uh, with the Michael Jackson movie on it. Oh, and then they do. Uh, then they have a the Famicom, the AV Famicom. I'm actually in the market for one of these, although not for one in the box. But this box is in fairly good condition and it's going for a hundred dollars. This is something you would find in Tokyo for about what 150, I think, loose. I think finding it in the sticks for about $100 complete, that's a, that's a good price. It's a, well, it's a fair price. I've seen it go, I've seen them go for less, of course. And then we've got some oh, complete in box slim PS2s. Interesting. 70 bucks. And we've got this one, the white one, going for 
And then we have a complete PS1. Well, a complete, like, original PlayStation. Which is actually interesting, and I might pick up just for completeness' sake. I can't tell what model exactly this is. Because, you know, there's ones, there's some PlayStations that have, um, they have the red, white, the red, white, and yellow cables already in, you know, the, in, in the system itself. I think this must be a later model because it has the AV multi out. I'm not 100% sure, actually, on what you can see down here. This must, I'm guessing it's a newer model, I think. And if you look here, we have the Capcom Power Stick Fighter, as well as ASCII's Special Fighter Stick. Um, these are some Super Nintendo. This is, this is the Super Famicom logo. These are some arcade sticks that you can use to play your... Oh, wow, they actually have a lot of arcade sticks, because here we've got the... Wow, the street... The, is this Mad Cats? Yeah, this is the Mad Cat Street Fighter V stick for the PS4 and PS3. They also have some Neo Geo sticks for the PlayStation 3. And actually, I think these are like 40 bucks. I, I think that's okay. It actually might be worth picking up. They've got a lot of arcade sticks. I've seen them down here. They've got the Fighting Stick SS from Hori for the Sega Saturn. And they even have, and I, thank God I didn't miss this, they have a complete Model 1 Mega Drive going for about $90. Once again, the Mega Drive is, you know, as bad as Super Famicom collecting has gotten with all the expensive prices. The, uh, the Genesis has gotten even worse. I'm missing anything? Oh yeah, and I wanted to show you this Xbox 360 HD DVD player that they're selling for $20, which, man, you know, I kind of, it's tempting just from a collection standpoint because this was the height of Microsoft's hubris when they thought they could defeat the Blu-ray, and uh, they did not. Oh, and then here's a, here's a complete, oh yeah, a complete silver GameCube. I already have one of those, and then here we've got a complete N64. It doesn't have the instruction manual in it, unfortunately. But it is an almost complete, it's at least an inbox, blue Nintendo 64 prop, about $60. So let's head over to some software. Here we've got lots of loose games. We'll go down to the bottom in just a bit. Oh, here's the, oh, the original Double Dragon over $16. I would not miss this. Double Dragon 2 is better. Yes, it's better. But Double Dragon 1 is still pretty good. We've got Mega Man, Rock Man 4. We've got this little, this was um, this was a sticker from I think the outlet that sold it before, uh, Takarashima. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if this might turn off a collector. I think it's pretty cool. I'm a bit ambivalent about this sticker. <laughs> I got Happy Birthday Bugs from Chemco. <laughs> Maybe someone wants that. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, GoldenEye. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> oh, and then we've got, uh, oh, Ocarina of Time, going for $5. N64 games still uh, still haven't taken off. Don't know what's going on with that. I mean, puzzle bobble. Oh, 10 bucks. 10 bucks for puzzle bobble. Oh, and uh, what do we got? We got um, Kirby Super Deluxe. 10 bucks. Wow. Oh, oh and then here's um, Say Condensed to 3, which, uh, I mean, what? What do they call that in English? I, well, because it never got a, a localization, so I don't even know if it has an official English title. And what can we look for? Oh, here's um, here's Animal Crossing. So you may remember Animal Crossing from the GameCube. However, it was originally an N64 release in Japan. And here it is, complete inbox for $20. Cool. Very neat. Very neat stuff. Oh, here's... um. Super Mario RPG, I think complete in boxes goes for what, $100 plus for the for the American version? Here you can get it for $15. Oh, well, they even have it. It's a, it's a bit faded. It's a bit faded, but here's Earthbound for $20. Wow. Wow. I think this, even in Tokyo, I think they're starting to charge tourist prices on, on Mother 2 because I think in Tokyo this could easily go. Uh, if you're looking at it at Super Potato or even like, like Retro Camp Dungeon. Oh, this could go for like, you know, what, 80 bucks plus, I think, sometimes? Here, 20 bucks. That's a fair price. I think you can get that at Tsudugaya for 20 bucks. And, you know, here's an unsung hero of the, um, I think this is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, Space Bazooka. This is an unsung hero of the, um, the Super Scope. This is, I love this. I love playing this as a kid. My dad bought this game uh, back in the early 90s. And, oh, I had such fun with this. And, wow, five bucks? It's a pretty quick game, so it's probably only worth five dollars, <laughs> to be honest. But it is a great game, and I highly recommend it if you do have a Super Scope. And for some reason, here's a, here's a copy going for three dollars. 
Actually, wow, three bucks? I might just pick this one up. Because it looks like it's got everything. If it doesn't have something, usually it will say. And then for some reason, this version that looks a bit crappier, it actually doesn't look as good. It's going for five dollars. But who knows? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Never play Saga games. I hate Saga. So we're just going to skip over that. Um, here we go. Oh, here's Diddy's Conquest. This is going for five dollars. Um, and it says it does not have the instruction manual, which is unfortunate. But they do have a complete copy over here for for the Big Ten. Is Diddy's Conquest? Wow. I might actually. I might pick that up too. That's tempting. I'm trying to get. I want to get all the Nintendo-made games for the Super Famicom complete in box. Because I mean, there's no way I can get. I can afford. <laughs> there's no way I can afford a complete Super Famicom box collection. I mean, those are some real expensive games. Anything else? Here's some uh, Megami Tensei. Wow, 16 bucks. Wow. Man, yeah, the art for this, or the art for all the um, Shin Megami Tensei games for the Super Family Gone is pretty wild. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I think. Wait, Treasure Hunter G, was this the last Squaresoft game for the Super Famicom? I think it might have been. It might have been, because this was a, this was the, when this came out was about the time they were switching over to the PlayStation. Anything else of no? We do have a couple of uh, Genesis games. Burning Force. Huh. Never heard of that. And that's from Namco. And the Money Game 2. And Sofel. We also have a couple of Game Boy Advance games, but nothing to write home about. Here's some Yu Gi Oh! If you believe in the heart of the cards. Let's go to the game aisle. And then if we have time, we'll round everything out in the junk section. They had quite an extensive GameCube section, which I thought was very cool because I want to get into the GameCube because the games are still cheap. No one's really collecting for the GameCube yet. So you can still get Mario Party 5 for like $12. Oh, Double Dash, how much is Double Dash going for? 20 bucks, nothing at all, nothing at all. Do they have any other sweet deals? Um, well, I mean, nothing Nothing in the GameCube is really going to get you a deal. They do have a couple of Harvest Moon games. Like, here's ten. Here's one for ten bucks. Let's put up on Marvelous. Did Marvelous really do that? Wow, I, I forgot they did the, uh, the Harvest Moon games. Oh, and then here we go, Twin Snakes. It's actually pretty good. You know, fifteen bucks for Twin Snakes. Oh, and here, here's Doshin the Giant. That's real neat. That's going for fifteen bucks. That used to be a di um, uh, 64 disc drive game. Oh, here's um, Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door. It's going for 2,400 yen. That's about $24. That's pretty good. That's not bad. And then here's wow, Donkey Konga. They got a lot of Kongas in the back. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm going for three bucks. Wow. Wow. And here, oh, this is very Japanese. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Uh, Dolbutsu Bancho. <laughs> Interesting. What is even? Do we do we get some screenshots? I guess you take care of some QB looking animals. I mean, it is for the GameCube, so that makes sense. Very interesting. Hmm. Oh, here's Fantasy Star Online. I remember, I remember I bought Final Fantasy, or er, Final Fantasy. Now I actually do have Crystal Chronicles in a box over here. That's going for $10. A lot of these discs seem to have some scratches on them, which is interesting. I wonder how that happened. I heard I was, um, looking into disc rot and, a, and some guy on the internet claims that GameCube games are the most prone out of all of the disc based systems to have disc rot so maybe collecting GameCube games is a mistake but Fantasy Star Online this would actually probably be a mistake now because no one's playing it online anymore but I remember playing it when I was a kid when I first got the GameCube I bought Fantasy Star Online thinking that I would eventually get the RAM the uh, the, the modem adapter for Fantasy Star Online, and uh, that never happened. <laughs> oh wow! And then here's some wild, loose, some loosey goosey who cards. Wow. Anything interesting? I mean, they all look pretty cool. They all have some great art on them. I just couldn't tell you anything about them. These are going for like five bucks each. Right? Probably get a nice, a nice cool set. They have a lot of. They have a lot of PC Engine stuff. Here's a lot of um, Super CD games. 
Anything cool? You know, I'm, I'm just waiting for the day when I pull some like $300 game out of here and it's like, you know, worth five bucks, but I have no idea what it is. I have no idea if it's good. And then someone leaves me a comment saying how foolish I was. And here's some complete Who card games. Let's see. Oh, come on. Come on. Just trying to put that. Trying to make an interesting video. And of course, we've got a lot of Sega Saturn, PlayStation games. They even had Death Smiles. Where was that? And there's DMC. It's very close. Where did I put Death Smiles? I pulled that somewhere. Okay, well, just... Pr <laughs> I promise you, if you travel to the south of Japan and you come to Miyazaki Prefecture, you will find Death Smiles here. I don't think anybody's really looking out for that game. Still got a few minutes. We'll go check out the junk. They have a very interesting junk section. This is actually probably definitely of all of the places I've been on Kyushu. This has been the wildest. Here's the game section. I think we can go... Ah, no, I was off by a mile, excuse me. So they do have some junk games. This is weird in that over there is where all the junk section, the junk section for the games are. But then we come over here for the actual, like, hardware. And we find some cool stuff, like here's this Sakura Kaisen Special Edition Dreamcast controller. I have no idea if this is worth money. I'm not really into Sakura Tyson, but it's real beat up. And it does come with the VMU, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think that's being sold separately. That's neat. Here we have a bin of Super Famicom controllers. I'm sure maybe you could probably clean up some of these and maybe sell them. Anything else? Here's some, oh yeah, see, we've got a lot of loose N64 controllers. These are going to be pretty dicey. And a Game Boy printer. Oh, I think... I think the printing paper for this is quite rare, so I don't know if this is worth picking up. I don't know if that's worth anything. Got some Dreamcast stuff. Oh, and then, yeah, adding to the mystery of the Sakura Tyson controller is this, the Sakura Tyson 2 Rumble Pack for the Dreamcast. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. Is there anything else? Oh, here's some Donkey Kongas. Wow. Oh man, this actually, this is, huh? it's tempting, tempting, tempting. I, I could be playing Donkey Konga tonight for the cost of six dollars. Well, I guess if I bought a, if I bought a Dreamcast as well. In here, looks like we got some arcade sticks, some joysticks. Got, oh, we got a Junk Hori pad. Wow, interesting. A Junk Hori, um, what is it, arcade stick SS? Fighting stick SS? Yeah, that's in there. I might, I'd rather pick up the clean one for just a few dollars extra. Anything else that's cool? Um, here's the junk consoles. There's all the junk game cubes. Oh yeah, and then they for so the um the Neo Geo CD has skyrocketed in value so much so that this is a junk system because they haven't tested it because they don't have the proper cords. Um, so what'll happen is because for for systems like this, I think it it. Let's look at the back. You can connect it AV-wise through S-Video or Composite. But the power cord is something that's quite rare. So what happens is on hard-offs, when they don't have all the proper cords, and why would they for a Neo Geo CD, um, they just get it in for some reason the person selling it didn't have their power cord for some reason or they were keeping it for another reason. And they'll just kind of trade it in and they're like, okay, well, it's junk. It most likely works, but since we can't guarantee it, we just throw it in the junk section. And here it is for $40. I'm pretty sure this works. Um, and that this would be a cool pickup, although I already have one. Here we have some loose Xbox 360s. What's the problem with these? Let's see, well, let's see, that says it works. It might just be because it's dirty. A lot of the times things get thrown in the junk section just because, you know, they're dirty, they're dusty. They've got things that would take more than a couple minutes to clean. So the staff just throws them back here. Like, look at this dusty, dirty OG Xbox. Yeah. Hmm, anything else of note? Oh, I think I might have pulled something. Oh, let me... oh yeah, I did pull. Oh, no, yeah. Nope, that's 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 an N64. I did pull a a really dirty Mega Drive, a Model One, but I can't seem to find it, and I don't want to put the phone down. But there's just so much stuff here that it is 
overwhelming to say the least. And I mean, I I didn't even have time to hit to the, get to the showcase, but we're up, we're about to hit 20 minutes. Um, they did have uh, what did they have? Rondo of Blood for 120 bucks. They didn't really have anything super rare, but I think this is definitely a really cool place to visit if you're looking for staple stuff. Like we're talking Donkey Kongs, we're talking Game Cubes. There's nothing exceedingly rare here except for, I guess, the exception of that Neo Geo CD. They did have a cool set of Neo Geo CD games that they weren't selling for for a real high price, so those might be worth it. But otherwise, it's a fair shop. It's got cheap games, it's got cheap consoles. So Hard Off Miyazaki is definitely a place I would recommend visiting. Although it's, I mean, if you're coming in from Tokyo, it's gonna be real hard getting here because this is the ass end middle of nowhere. But I'm gonna end it here on this, uh, yeah. Oh, on, on this, uh, on this PlayStation, on this PS1 that has a sticky opening button, according to the, according to the writing. So I'm gonna call it here. This has been Jay Contra saying thanks for watching. See you next time, and mahalo.